right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. As always, if you learn something, go ahead, hit the like, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get that notification when I drop a new video. So today, I am back in Tableau, and we're going to be talking about context filters, right? So in my last video where I was reverse engineering Tableau starter COVID uh, a dashboard, I asked, do you want to see more dashboard? Do you want to see, or do you want to understand context filters? And everyone overwhelmingly said context filters. So here we are, we're going to talk about context filters. So why do you need to know about context filters? So two main reasons, they help improve performance. So if you have a lot of filters, you're connected to like a huge data source, you're going to have performance issues or you can have performance issues. If you use a context filter, you can help improve performance, right? And another reason you'd want to use context filters uh, is if you're doing a top in analysis. Sometimes you need to apply a filter to your top in analysis and you need to put a context filter in place to give you the correct results. So we'll show you that as well. So uh, before we get into this, you know I got to get my uh, humble brag slash shared success. So this is what, September of 2020, and this is on Tableau uh, Public. We have featured authors, right? And then of course, you know, surprise, surprise, I would say, uh, look who is here. Um, and again, I, I always thank you. I call this shared success. Because if you aren't watching my videos, then no one knows what I'm doing or saying, right? Um, you can look here. I've got a passion for learning and sharing what I've learned through YouTube tutorials. Um, my recent Tableau public series on building COVID-19 dashboard uses data from Tableau's own COVID-19 data hub. Very well received by users of all levels across the globe. So that's you, right? Um, again, thank you. Again, shared success. If you're not watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, then then I don't get noticed. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. I always thank my subscribers. So uh, enough of that. Let's get back into here. Let's talk about the uh, Tableau order, uh, filter order of operations, uh, if you will. So if you look here, you'll see that extract filters and data source filters are at the top, right? So an extract filter is, let's, let's say you're connected to a data source with a million rows in it, and you don't need to be analyzing, or you don't need to analyze a million rows. So you can create an extract filter, right? Um, that narrows it down to, let's say, 100,000 rows, and that's a little bit more manageable, right? So you've gotten rid of 900,000 rows, <laughs> right? If they're not in the file, physical extract file, you can't analyze them. So that's, I mean, that's really the top dog filter right there. So you got an extract filter. So now, once you've created an extract, you can put a data source filter on that extract. So let's say you've got, you know, the 100,000 rows in your extract, but, you know, you want to filter it down a little a little further. I only care about, uh, you know, uh, one particular department or one city. Let's say city equal Atlanta, right? Um, I can just put a data source filter on that extract. And now all the other filters are only, uh, can only see rows uh, for Atlanta. So that's a data source filter. So now let's get into kind of, um, you know, the the other areas here. You see we have context, dimension, measure, and table calcs. And off to the side, these are, um, so sets, conditional filters, top end, fixed LOD. Those are going to be above dimension filters. And we'll see how that uh, comes into play. I'm going to show you a top end. I'm going to show you a fixed LOD and how they interact with dimensions and what happens when you change your dimension to a context. So stay tuned. Let's take a look, first of all, at dimension filters. So this is uh, where we have two dimension filters. They're on the same level, right? So taking a look at my data, this is NBA data from the 2019-2020 season, and I'm looking at uh, points per game. 
uh, for the season. James Harden, Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal didn't make an all-NBA uh, team. I mean, <laughs> 30.5 a game and didn't make an all-NBA team. I mean, you tell me. Same thing with Ice Trey here. I mean, 29.6 and didn't make an – anyway, I'm going to stop venting on that. But anyway, these are um, your top scorers in the NBA. And so let's say we were to put a uh, uh, two filters on here, conference and position. Right. Let's see how they work. They're at the same level on the order of operations. Right. So I can say, um, you know, for a position, only show me point guards. Right. And so only point guards come back. Right. And you'll notice that the conference is Eastern and Western, but only point guards come back. Now, let's say I were to change this conference, uh, the conference uh, filter here to, let's say, Western, right? You'll notice only Western comes back, but I have many more uh, positions than just point guard. And so what ends up happening when you select two dimension filters, they're at the same level, is that they both kind of go off and do their own thing. They both go off and compute results, right? independent of what the other filter is doing. They both go off, they compute their results. So this filter said, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going to return all Western rows, right? Makes sense. This filter says, I'm only looking at point guards, right? They can be Eastern or Western, I don't care. I'm only looking at point guards. But when we combine them, they come back together and they say, all right, what rows do we have in common, right? They have in common uh, Western conference rows and point guard rows. So at the intersection of those two results, that is what is returned when you're on the same level dimension-wise. So hopefully that makes sense, right? This is just basic filtering in Tableau. So now let's do a context filter example. If we look at the order of operations, uh, I'm going to put a top in filter here. Uh, with with the dimension filter. So let's say I want to look at the top 15 NBA scores, right? So this is okay, kind of pretty much everyone, but I want to limit this to the top 15. So I'm going to look at the player names. I'm going to put a filter on here, right? There's going to be a top. And let's say by field, I want the top. Uh, whoops, I can just put 15 here by sum of points. That's okay. Let's apply that. Say okay. There we go. I'm just going to go entire view here. So you'll notice these are the top 15 scorers in uh, this, uh, this set. Now, what if I said uh, I want to know the top 15 scorers only in the Western Conference, right? So I have 15 uh, marks here. You can see that. I've got 15 um, rows. What if I want to see the top 15 in the Western Conference, right? Right, you got LeBron down here putting in some work. Uh, Ice Trey representing ATL. Um, how would I how would I do that? Well, you would think normally. Okay, I'm going to put the conference on here and just show me Western. This will give me the top 15 in the Western Conference. And you'll notice that it does not give you the top 15 in the Western Conference. You'll see that there are 10 marks, not 15, right? Um, and you'll notice there's, wow, there's a lot of uh, top scorers in the Western Conference, uh, you know, the, the best conference, uh, you would say, right? But, it, but in any event, where, where are my other five, uh, you know, uh, scorers in the Western Conference? Well, let's take a look and see what's happening. If you look, you'll notice that top N is slightly above dimension, right? So what's happening is the top 15 are being calculated first, right? Those top 15 in the Eastern or Western Conference are being calculated. And so now the dimension filter has to say, all right, I can only work with what is passed down to me. And what's been passed down to me are these top, are these 15 rows, and I can filter those 15 rows. So I'm filtering those 15 rows by Western, right? So if I were to, just curious here, show the filter, I'm going to bring it over here, right, make it a little easier to read. If I go Eastern here, you'll see those are the other five I was missing, right? Um, that's because, right, I'm not getting the top 15 in the Eastern because, again, I'm only, the top end filter is passing down those 15 rows to me. I only have 15 rows. My dimension filter only has 15 rows to work with. So how do we fix that? How do I see the top 15 in the Western Conference. I only have 10 marks now. In order to see the top 15 scorers 
in the Western Conference, I have to change my dimension filter for conference, right? Right now it's conference equal Western. I got to change that dimension filter to a context filter. And then once I do that on the order of operations, right? The Western Conference, conference equal Western is above the top end now. So now it will be passing uh, only Western Conference rows to top end and then top end can say well okay out of the western conference rows what are my top 15 so we once we do this right you'll see again i have 10 marks once i change this to uh and once i add to context this is now a conference a, a conference filter it's a context filter now so that means that only western conference rows western conference now is the context right the top in there are my top 15 essentially has to only work with the rows that it is given and it is only given western conference rows right it's at the top it's above right so western conference okay now top 15 you'll see i have 15 uh, 15 marks so hopefully that makes sense uh, let's take a look at another example let's take a look at a fixed lod example so I've got, um, you know, and this is Sample Superstore. I've got like two data sources in here. Uh, one connected to Sample Superstore, right? Default uh, database comes with, uh, with Tableau. So I'm filtered by a customer and um, this is a fixed LOD calculation, right? I want to know the maximum order date for this customer, right? So, well, no, yes, that's right. The, the maximum order date for this customer so if I were to take off watch this um, let's clear the filter you'll see yeah so it's for that customer you see each customer has its own different uh, uh, max order date right so I'm gonna hit control Z and we'll see the max order date for this customer is 11 20 2019 that's right okay so now what if I were to put in a category uh, let's uh, category let's throw technology in here You'll see uh, technology, the, ma the, uh, the max order date is 920, right? Um, let's put category in here. And let's say I want to see, again, only technology. Let's apply that. You'll notice my max order date is still 1120. It doesn't care about, you know, that I put a dimension filter on technology. Even though we can see the order date is 920 here, it doesn't care that I've got this max order date doesn't care. Why? Because it's higher up in the hierarchy, right? You'll you'll notice here that fixed LOD is above dimension filters. So the fixed LOD looks and says, all right, what is the max order date for this customer? Um, it is 1120. Okay, that's great. And then the dimension filter comes in and, and filters uh, to, to category. And, you know, it shows, shows all these order dates. But it has no effect. My point is it has no effects. This, this dimension filter has no effect on what's going on here. Now, watch what happens when I change this to a, uh, or when I add it to context, change it to a context filter. Oops, not customer name. Let's remove that from the context. Watch what happens when I add um, category to the context. So now what I've done is I've said, okay, I'm only looking at technology rows, right? I'm only passing technology rows to the fixed LOD. So this max order date has no choice but to say, okay, uh, for this customer, uh, you want to you wanna see the, the technology uh, rows that it is 920. So um, that is another example of how context filters can get you the correct uh, in information, right? Again, I can take this off to um, when I clear the filter, you'll see that uh, this is still still working. So if I look at the 920 here, it is 920. That is the max 818 for this customer. Um, it is it is working, right? I'm only I'm, I only had a filter on the customer name just to just to get things out of the way. But the max order date uh, when added to the I'm sorry when the category is added to the context, it makes the max order date have to recalculate and only look at the max order date for technology. If I remove this from the context, uh, 
I still have technology here, but now it's looking at all the rows. The fixed LOD is above the category, um, which is a dimension filter. So hopefully that makes sense. So um, when would you use, again, I, we talked about when you would use a, um, a, a context filter, but just a couple things to keep in mind. Um, you know, using a single context filter that significantly reduces the size of the data set is better than applying many context filters. All right. And if this is the rule of thumb from Tableau, right? If your filter does not reduce the size of the data set by one tenth or more, basically 10%, um, it's worse to add it to the context because there's a performance cost. So if you get 100 rows and your context filter doesn't remove at least 10, <laughs> right, um, it's actually worse to add it to the context. So just keep these things in mind. These are guidelines from, uh, from Tableau that I have up here. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. This has been uh, Anthony Smoke um, going over context filters. If you learned something, go ahead, give me a like, leave a comment, and as always, Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.